In the year 2008, the New York Giants defeated the New England Patriots in one of the most thrilling upsets of all time. The United States voted in the first African American president of all time. On April Fool's Day, YouTube rickrolled all of its viewers by redirecting all featured videos on the front page to Never Gonna Get. The U.S. saw the largest financial crisis since the Great Depression, the United States was ranked the 18th most obese nation in the world, and Walmart paid employees of Walmart de Mexico and company script vouchers use a blow made at Walmart stores until a court ruling in 2008. But I'm sure you're all familiar with the very most important event of 2008, because on April 1st, 2008, NVIDIA released one of the most game game-changing budget GPUs of all time, ushering in the brand new era of the PC Master Race. NVIDIA released in 2008 the GeForce 9800 GTX, and then shortly after the 9800 GTX Plus, which is what I will be reviewing for you all today. I am hit with these motherfucking $100 video card on this motherfucking video. Yes, I know you've seen a million of these budget $100 videos, but Hear me out, I'm gonna do my best to make this worth, worth your while. while. <laughs> the GeForce 9800 GTX Plus is the only GPU released by Nvidia bearing the plus distinction, meaning it's basically a ramped up version of your standard 9800 GTX, you get a slight bump on the core clock of about 100 megahertz. Not really a huge difference maker, but they decided to rebrand this GPU specifically for that little uh, bump and boost clock, and I believe the memory clock's a little bit higher, but other than that, not really that huge of a difference, but I do like the little plus logo on the GPU. Looks very fancy, makes me feel good about myself. The 9800 GTX Plus, as far as specs go, features 128 CUDA cores, a 738 MHz core clock, and 512 MB of DDR3. And of course, everyone's favorite part of these old NVIDIA GPUs, the prehistoric cooling solution known as the blower style fan. And the good thing about this guy is the noise. I used to worry about my CPU cooler, it always used to ramp up to 100% and get a little bit loud, but plug in the 9800 GTX Plus and I can barely hear myself think, let alone worry about my CPU. But seriously, this thing is ridiculously loud, take a little listen right here and see for yourself. But luckily for you guys, I powered through this noise so I could do some benchmarks for you all and let you know if this GPU still runs the latest titles at max settings. Unfortunately, this thing only supports up to DirectX 10, so even though it can run some newer games, a lot of the newer AAA titles it does not support. They need DirectX 11 and this thing only supports up until 10. So. Here's the best I could do for you guys, there's a lot of new recent games, but there are also some retro ones thrown in there, so let's see how this thing performs with my Ryzen 1700X. So I ended up benchmarking 9 games, all at 1080p, but at different settings, you're going to be able to see the settings in each individual graph, so let's get right into them.
Yeah. And there you have it. This 10-year-old GPU churned out some very surprising benchmarks with playable FPS in pretty much every single game we tested. Now, bear in mind, this GPU was paired with one of the new Ryzen uh, 1700Xs, so the CPU I have in here is kind of overkill for a GPU of this caliber, so it kind of does you know, put things into perspective in your standard budget build where you have like a 9800 GTX Plus and like a Pentium, it's not going to perform as well. You're going to have some bottlenecking, but here, uh, no CPU bottleneck at all. That wasn't a problem. Uh, the GPU was the only thing holding this PC back, and you really got to see the full potential that this graphics card has, and I was very surprised. The GPU wasn't even overclocked in any of these benchmarks, so uh, you could even add another 5 FPS maybe onto the benchmarks as a whole if you overclock this GPU to the max. I have heard it's a pretty good overclocker, but it does even, it makes it even more loud than it already is, which is kind of a, a sacrifice because this card, like I said, with that blower style fan, uh, it's definitely gonna hurt your eardrums a little bit. But despite the benchmarks coming out pretty decently, uh, the main problem with this GPU is the whole DirectX 10 thing. There's just so many games that this GPU just isn't even compatible with. Even though I feel like the GPU itself is powerful enough to play a lot of new games that aren't supported by the GPU. For instance, Star Wars Battlefront, a very well optimized game, uh, does not support DirectX 10, even though I'm sure this card, if I'm not sure you know, what the limits are if there is a way that Star Wars Battlefront could be DirectX 10 compatible, but uh, there definitely was some performance left on the table, and I feel like if this GPU had DirectX 11, it still would be relevant today, but with DirectX 10, it's something I really have trouble recommending to go out and buy when there are so many more current options on the market. But as a whole, if you're just looking to play around with some old PC parts with those great vintage designs, I love the look of this card. So retro, so pleasing, back when GPUs had the flashy designs. It's a lot of fun. I liked messing with this card, even though it was very, very loud and very obnoxious. It's still charming, and it's great to see that GPUs like this can still play modern games. So let me know what you all thought in the comments section below. Leave a like rating if you like the video, and if you're new, you can subscribe. Uh, go for that if you'd like. And if you're interested in purchasing this GPU, please use my associate links down in the description. I get a little kickback, and it helps out the channel a lot. So, see y'all later. Have a great day. Peace.